Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech, but today we're going to take you back to the past. We're going to check out a old school HP AMD Vision Pro system. Now, the interesting thing about this system is that we actually got uh, uh, three cores within this system. Normally, you got dual, quad, octo, etc., etc. We only have three cores in here, actually, probably one core with three threads or something crazy like this. So, this thing is about, man, I'm pretty sure this things 11 years old right now we got her locked up with 10 gigabytes of ram which is a bit of a strange number amd radeon uh, uh, 7450 graphics card i just want to do a little bit of a benchmark the way it is to see exactly how much we can get off this thing once again this thing is really crazy old most video games you need four cores this came from a production environment and um, yeah, let's see if it can actually pull off a reasonable score these days. So ultimately what I'm trying to find out here is can this thing game and can this thing be used for basic office tasks these days at 11 years old? Once again, Moore's Law isn't what it used to be and technology doesn't double itself every, what, 12, 16 months because uh, basically things are getting so small that electricity isn't working predictably with it. And it's kind of hard to power things if you can't... Uh, predictably push power to it. So I'm going to start off with the benchmark, I'm going to give it a bit of a gamer test, and then I'm going to switch over upgrader as hard as I can, and it's going to make her as fast as I can. And then after that, we will uh, we'll basically see if, the, if there's any point in having a system like this in this day and age, if it would actually help a user, if it would hold them back. Ultimately, I want to make sure that this thing is faster than a mini PC, than the mini PCs that we've been uh, reviewing before in the past. Is there a place in the world for an old girl? All right, so we got the plain test. I'm getting 15 frames per second. I like what I see. I'm definitely getting better on here than I have on my mini PCs in the past. So this old girl's uh, really holding out. But I'm starting to wonder if maybe this graphics card wasn't shipped with this computer. However, it's a very old, very cheap graphics card. So just to uh, give you an idea. Next up, of course, we have the DirectX 10 test. And I'm getting uh, standardly under one frames per second to a maximum of three frames per second. So uh, that's definitely not the best. But then again, I am being penalized because uh, this video card doesn't have MSAA. Honestly, I'm not even sure what that is. DirectX 11 pulling off at about seven frames per second, being penalized by 30%. And 4.2 frames, those space jellyfish are definitely moving around a lot better than they were on uh, the mini PCs that I've reviewed lately. So this thing is definitely faster than uh, most mini PCs I've run into. Well, the, the final score will let us know that, of course. Okay, it looks like we passed directly by the DirectX 12, which isn't uh, so unreasonable. All right, so 810, that uh, is just under an OptiFlex 710 at 868, and underneath it we have the Asus VM48 gigabyte RAM, uh, and that comes in with uh, 616, so not as bad as it could be, especially since we have a $20 video card in here. So next up, I want to try some Vaudio games. So here we go, we're installing Steam, we're installing the Grand Theft Auto 5, all the great games that kids love to play. You'll see here that I installed the USB 3.0 card, PCI card, because man, this thing comes with only 2.0 and I am not dealing with that speed while I'm doing my transfer. That's right, I'm transferring offline. Here we see uh, the RAM, here we got a good idea what's on the inside, what you can install into it. And it's got uh, relatively good expansion capabilities. This thing can only get 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I'm going to test the exact speed. But anyways, it turns out that this video card didn't, isn't what originally came with the system. And because of that, I'm, once this uh, transfer is done, I'm going to be doing a benchmark on just the CPU alone. All right, so right here we can see we got uh, the three processors, AMD, uh, Phenom, and here's the uh, video card, ATI Radeon HD 420. So that's definitely not as good as a video card. Let's take it for a spin and see how it does, though. All right, no GPU, no problem. We're getting a score of 319. It would be better if the 3D Mark actually pushed or at least told the, the system that it can't do 
uh, DirectX 12. We would have a better score here. But as it is, even without, even totally removing the 3D, this is still better than Lenovo T420 and HP uh, Compaq uh, 6200. Wow, okay, okay. This is, this is of course, a 6005. 6, so I would have thought that one would have been faster than this one. And this is close to uh, an EPC, uh, an Asus, a 35 bucks unit bare bones that I got. Anyways, next it's time to uh, test out some video games. So here we go, we actually managed to get into Fortnite. It is playing uh, not in performance mode, which is amazing. We'll see how fast it can actually uh, pull down this game. Yeah, we're getting 30 frames per second. We definitely got some low resolution on here. Man, I love ro low resolution. Okay, we're having a look around. It's responsive, so that's all right. I think it looks like it's from PlayStation 3 again. So the quality isn't exactly 100%, but yeah, take what you can get in a situation like this. I mean, this didn't even work for uh, Grand Theft Auto 5. It would not load it at all. But if you're if you're just in it for the fun factor, if you really love this game, you might get away with it. All right, guys, this is where it gets interesting. It's time to get the lead out. We're going to try out a Geoforce GT 1030 because it's the only freaking thing I have access to in this hardware shortage market. So as this is updating, let's talk about the RAM. Once again, we can only have 16 gigs RAM maximum. This is what I got. This is what I'm rocking out. We got some uh, DDR3 laptop type RAM inside of adapters. This makes reusing it a lot easier, a lot cheaper. These adapters are only about five dollars each, but uh, about eight gig, uh, an eight gig stick used ship from Alberta is thirty bucks at the moment. All right, so we got the RAM all maxed out, sixteen gigs. We have a real powerful half-ass video card in there, the GTX 1030. Let's take her for a spin now and see how she does. Huh? Well, that's a snag. Unable to run the PDF render test. What? Whoa, nope, that did not work. It looks like we absolutely need four cores in order to get uh, Grand Theft Auto to work. Let's try out Fortnite. Okay, so this video card absolutely helps out when it comes to Fortnite. I can uh, I can take a look around. Things aren't as glitchy. They definitely are kind of glitchy. Um, I definitely think if you want to be playing video games on an old computer, you got to make sure it is a quad core, though. I don't think this is going to be enough. I think I would be bold enough to say, if your computer, if you're getting a computer that is over uh, 8 years old, don't. <laughs> just don't. Unless you really know it, unless you really understand it. It seems to be after 8 years, just the flexing of the heating and the cooling and just being around that long is really hard on a system. Man, computers live only like half as long as dogs at best. And after a certain point in time, it's just to leave be best to leave Betsy out to pasture. Okay. DirectX 10 on the benchmark, going at about 30 frames per second now. Very nice, very nice. Sorry, that was DirectX 9. This is DirectX 10 operating at uh, 10 to 13 frames per second. That's definitely uh, better than we had before. Here we have DirectX 11 operating at 63 frames per second. Not so bad. Let's check out them sexy space jellyfish. That's right. Gonna smacks me some alien cheeks, y'all. DirectX 12. Fly me to the moon at 34 and 33 frames per second. Not so bad. Alright, and that brings us to the end of this adventure. Pass mark score 1,300. Honestly, the first time I ran this score, I got 1,800. So this is about the same speed as a Dell i3 Optiflex 9020, a Lenovo M700 i5, or a um, Lenovo M92 uh, i7 with 8 gigabytes. Anyways, would I recommend this system? Nah, nah. Not unless you're absolutely desperate. You can get the thing for like 20 bucks with an SSD. You remember always installing an SSD. Never use, never use bad... Uh, power supplies and never use old hard drives never buy old hard drives there's only pain down that road my friends anyways that's it from me net from nevs tech bits like and subscribe if you like this stuff it's always appreciated folks and as always take care of each other